Hello and welcome to the Kick in the Creatives podcast, hosted by myself, Sandra Busby, and my fellow creative, Tara Roskell, offering you interviews, inspiration, motivation, and a gentle prod in the right direction. And for lots more information, challenges, and other useful tools to help you get creating, you can go to www.kickinthecreatives.com. And of course, this is where you can also find today's show notes. Enjoy the show. So welcome to today's episode. And today we are going to list some of the worst questions that artists and creative are often asked. And, you know, originally I'd chosen a different title for this episode. I don't know if you noticed, Tara. No, but, um, I didn't. Yeah, 16 questions that will make an artist want to kill you. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> but I decided that might be a little bit too dramatic. So so I went with uh, 16 of the worst questions you can ask an artist. <laughs> I thought you were going to say you changed it from 15 than it was before. Oh, actually, do you know what? I've got a feeling it probably isn't 16. I think there's more now, but I don't know. <laughs> Never mind. Anyway, before we get onto our topic, as always, we want to thank everyone who's been sharing their work for the challenges with us on social media. As I say now, every week, so much has caught my eye. It's really hard to choose, but um, I want to give a mention to Carol Whitmore. Did you see that owl that she drew recently? The one with yes, the great big yeah. eye. Oh my gosh, I love that. It really just made me smile. And then she did a little ostrich face as well, which I absolutely love. So her faces for the February Faces Challenge has just been so quirky and so fun. Um, but that owl, I think that's my favourite of hers so far. I love her work because I love I what do. she did last last um challenge it seems mm. to be quite diverse what she does but really good it really is isn't it it's absolutely brilliant um and deb sane um as always her work is just instantly recognizable as her own and i love the faces that she's been doing um also for the february faces challenge she she kind of i don't know she, her again hers is really quirky it's just different she's got a style all of her own yeah, I think faces is Deb's thing, isn't it? it? It really is. Yeah, it's brilliant. So what about you, Tara? What's caught your eye? Well, I really liked a fairy face that Christy Neff drew. It was, um, I think it was in pencil. Did you see that one? I saw, yes, I did. I know which one you mean. Really good, yeah. Mm. And then, I don't want to say this right, Sana Sierra said she, really, she said she wasn't good at faces and then drew the most amazing face with pencil strokes. It almost looked like impressionistic. It was really quite yeah. subtle. Yeah. So good. And then Joanna Brown, or I don't know if it's Joanna or Johanna. So I'm sorry, Joanna Brown. She drew a pencil sketch of Mick Jagger. I thought it was really good. And she carried straight on from the sketchy, sketchy, sketchy face challenge on two yeah. hours. Yeah. No, I, I um, yeah, I've, I've seen some of her things as well. But, you know, what I was saying about how hard it is to pick someone out. Well, obviously, the group has just grown so big now hasn't it but everyone is so lovely we're so lucky we really are but um obviously I used to comment on everything but now I, I just every time I open the feed it's just this mass of new work so you know I, I see virtually all of it um and I but I can't obviously comment on all of it anymore because it, there's just so much but yeah are you finding that as well? Yeah, I am. I'm finding that. But I think everybody's really good because it, it doesn't have to be just us now because everybody's a part of it, aren't they? Oh, so yeah. everyone's cheering each other on as well. Oh, they are. It's so good. It's so good. Yeah. So anyway, I want to know what is new with you? Well, I've been doing the Kick 365 Challenge and so far I haven't missed a single day. And well done. We, yeah, I started on the 1st of January and I'm, I'll tell you what, I'm loving it. I really am. I mean, yeah. Yeah, I mean, there, there's definitely subjects, though, I clearly prefer drawing to others. So people and faces, I think they feature most heavily in my sketchbook. And I really think I, I need to start sketching more buildings, which I really do tend to avoid, mainly because like landscapes, I just find drawing them just so boring. I really do. So I, I think I need to use some of this challenge to explore you know, different ways to simplify the process and make it kind of more fun. So I think that's next on my agenda because I think I could just use this challenge to just keep drawing all the things that I find really fun to draw, but I'm not pushing myself to learn something new. And it's not that I can't draw buildings. It's just I, I hate drawing them. It's really <laughs> funny, isn't it? And so when we go to London, 
you know, I'm always sort of concentrating on the people around us and drawing them. But really, it's always nice, isn't it, to put them in some kind of, you know. Um, Context. Yeah, yeah, put them in a place, place them somewhere, whether there's buildings or, or inside a cafe or whatever. I, I don't, I'm not so good with backgrounds because I just can't be bothered with them. So I think, yeah, I think I probably need to look at ways of being able to do it in a quirky way and a nice simple way and I think that when I've seen your buildings in London the, the couple you've done they've been my favorite drawings of yours favorite it's sketches. Funny, isn't it? yeah, yeah. One, of them, one of them got rained all over and got yeah. washed away now that's probably why <laughs> <laughs> no, that was really good but, you know and, and it, it's funny isn't it because you instantly think oh perspective <laughs> it's just yeah. like oh you know but to be honest when you're doing a sketch in a sketchbook it, uh, yeah you have to get it roughly right but you you need it to read it as a building obviously and you need the depth to read a little bit right but at the same time I don't want to labor over anything and that's no. what I hey I, you know how I draw people I tend to draw them very quickly now and I, I like to get them down and with buildings I don't feel confident enough drawing them to be able to do that so yeah, I must admit when we went we went not the last time the time before and I tried just like laying down blocks of colored marker before you did, and yeah. Doing something like that, although they may look not looked amazing at the end, it was much more fun. So it is that finding the technique, isn't it, that makes it fun for you? Yeah, I need to kind of find the technique that is similar to the way I draw people, but obviously they have to be. They can't be as loose as the people I draw. They can't because then they wouldn't read as buildings. Probably with people, I think is different because people move. So when you you know, draw a person, you know, in an energetic way that reads well because they are moving things. But with a building, it's slightly different, isn't it? They're static. They're static. So you can't, uh, there needs to be a balance between structure, you know, and, energetic, yeah. but getting it structurally looking like a building. So, yeah. yeah so I, I think I probably need to work some more on that and put some sketches in my uh, of buildings in my book because as I say at the moment it's full of faces and people and feet and hands and, and all the subject I that I love to draw in my sketchbook but I kind of need to make it work for me and learn something from it as well as just have fun you know yeah maybe do one a week or something so mm. throw in one a week yeah I think I need to what I might do is get a Pinterest board together with all different yeah. buildings that I love the look of and just try and find some inspiration and see what what kind of thing works with my my drawings and my style you know yeah. anyway what about you what is new with you well just a little thing that I know you've been doing as well we've both been watching portrait artist portrait artist of the year haven't we oh yeah I love that so I, I hope that. everybody else has been watching that as well and what I've really liked about it this year for anyone that doesn't watch it I think is it's sky arts isn't it I yeah. don't know if you can get it in the US but I'm guessing you might be able to find it online somewhere but I think in years gone by, people have been quite traditional. Yeah, I don't mean traditional, traditional, but it's been, you know, oil paints, acrylic paints, yes. nothing much beyond that. But this year, they've almost thrown someone completely different in, in each episode mm. so far. And I've loved that. It's really breaking away from the you know, traditional way of someone has to have paint and, and all that. Well, there's um, one guy that did it on uh, Layers of Perspective. Uh, not perspective, perspex, perspective. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm thinking about buildings again. Yeah. Yeah. No, per, is it perspex? I'm yeah. trying to think of. And yeah. he kind of drew a layer on each and it was, that was nuts. really unusual. Yeah. yeah, it was totally nuts, but it was yeah. still really um, fun to, yeah. to look at, you know. Well, his self-portrait was similar, wasn't it? But it was on one of those um, plastic folders, I think, that yeah. you get, you know, like a plastic sleeve that you put papers in and you would kind of drawn on layers of that. And I actually really like that one. Yeah, yeah. I, I thought it was fun and, and it's quite nice because like you say they've got they still have the more traditional um artists but they've also they throw in a a few um more perhaps imaginative or well, not imaginative but ones with completely different style yeah a bit and, more modern arty type thing, yeah I guess. so it's yeah. making it really interesting to watch and I always love watching it because I love seeing how different people see the same thing yeah, can you imagine how scary it would be sitting there drawing that, knowing you've got four hours and you've got all these people watching you behind and then TV cameras? I couldn't bear it. I oh, could not bear it. Wouldn't that be scary? 
I, I would hate that. So it'd be all right if it was sketching, but if not, if it's, oh, can you imagine me? You know what my paintings are like. I'm a, more of a realism painter. Can you imagine me? With, yes, yeah. we've got four hours. Well, I'll probably get a nose done in four hours. Yeah. <laughs> you might get a background wash or something. Yeah. <laughs> so apart from that, I haven't really been doing anything apart from, <laughs> I'm joking, I've been doing the Find Your Art Style Experiment. I really wish I'd come up with a catchy name for that. It's a nightmare. but. <laughs> <laughs> but I have it, it's only sort of and we're recording this on the 5th of February and it's in the morning so I've only done four days so far but I am really enjoying it but it is so much work and not just because of the drawing side of thing I mean that's not too bad but the creating a video each day and I'm, I'm going to try and create a video most days there'll be days that I miss because I can't um but yeah I'm enjoying it and this week it's been looking at a Pinterest board of work I really like by artists I really like and trying to take elements of that and put it into my own work and and I'm not really so I'm not concentrating on one and really laboring that I'm just trying this trying that and then I'm hoping after a few weeks I kind of bring that together I'm going to be trying other things next week as well I've been loving your videos I really have and then every week we're going to catch up with a joint video aren't we where we'll talk about how you've got on and yeah it's a lot of fun so what happens if somebody wants to sort of do something similar and join in well we've created some videos haven't we if you go to i'm going to get this wrong now kickinthecreatives.com forward slash f-y-a-s which stands for find your art style you'll find the gist of what it's all about you know what we're doing how they can follow along and there they can sign up for a newsletter for that and for a monthly one where we'll send them out each week the videos that I've been making and you've been making at the end of the week with so they can just see and follow along if they want to I mean I'm making this up as I go along (laughs) there there is there is no actual one way is that you can find your style so I'm just taking bits from here and there that I find online so I might have watched a course I might have read a book I might have seen a suggestion somewhere or we might have talked about it and I'm just trying these things out so they can follow along if they want to with the videos as well. And also, you know, if, if you're listening to this and it's, you know, next year, it doesn't matter. You can go back and you can sort of do it anytime. You don't have to do it, you know, alongside Tara, literally. So no, I think it's a great idea. I love what you're doing so far and the video you put up yesterday. Yeah, I really, I'm really enjoying it. So I can't wait to see what you do today. <laughs> well, yesterday I actually tried to... Um, this is going to sound really sappy, put my heart into it a bit more in, into what I said on the video. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you'd laugh. You know what I mean, though? Instead of it just being, I'm doing this, I'm doing this, it was more like, because... Uh, you're, you're talking the difference between Delia Smith and Jamie Oliver, aren't you? Yeah, like, maybe. And four ounces of sugar or <laughs> yes. just bung a load of sugar in <laughs> to yeah. your day. Yeah, I know exactly I know, what you mean. A bit, a bit more as in... As in how it made me feel when I was doing yeah. things, I guess. Yeah. Oh, that's deep. Yeah, it that's is. Very deep. Are you going to be <laughs> drawing? I am quite gonna... deep, aren't I? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to be drawing your feelings? Oh, I could be, couldn't I? Yeah. Well, I am. T- Wait, well, I don't know if you watched a bit about my my one of my ideas for the theme. It's quite feelingy. Feelingy. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what though? It's t- it's so true because I think that. It, this is deep, actually, but I think that when you draw or you <laughs> yeah. paint, your mood can reflect in what your result is, whether it's the yeah. colours you choose or, you know, maybe it doesn't turn out very well and it's because you just weren't feeling it or whether, I don't know, or the subject you choose or, I don't know, yeah. I think it's, you could read a lot into how an artist was feeling if by what they paint and how they paint or draw sometimes. But it- but it was something really silly yesterday um, in that I just turned my pencil, not my pencil, my pen. I was mm. using kind of one of those manga pens that you suggested to me, actually. Yeah. Um, but holding it differently. So holding yeah. it more from upwards. upwards uh, and more, more towards the top and then on its side, weren't you? Yeah. So I was resting it on its side, but holding it the other way. I think I was holding it the other way around some of it as well. Yeah. And and. And how different that makes you feel when you're drawing, 
which is yeah god yeah. this is so deep <gasps> i know oh it's god. very People early have been turning over they don't expect this from us do they <laughs> no no actually you're right though because i remember years and years ago when i sort of did the art some of my art course and i was sort of having to do this thing where you had to draw holding the pencil in various ways and yeah. I think, I remember thinking, what is the point of this? But it is so, so there is a real point to it, actually, because it does certain ways make you draw more loosely and you yeah. don't, you can't sort of be too precious because you haven't got quite as much control. And it, yeah, I've never, I've never actually tried that with a pen. No, it's like, it brings us back to that question. Like how many creative uses can you think of a pencil, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> I've just realised as well, actually, we skipped over when you were talking about doing your kick 365. And I, oh, I think yeah. this is quite deep as well. That Ooh. We didn't talk about how you still managed to draw, even though you had a hangover. Oh, you've, I'm glad I'm responsible for the editing of this. <laughs> <Why>? <laughs> I did have a hangover and it's not my fault. It really isn't. Um, Paul's auntie Jean, um, who is in her 70s, I'll tell you what, I struggle to keep up with her. <laughs> and Paul's cousin Jeremy, the two of them are such a bad influence on us. So we went over there um, for an evening. The plan was we were going to book a holiday together and actually the holiday wasn't even mentioned and we just ended up having too much to drink. And, oh, my God. Do you know, I think it's an age thing, I've, but I cannot I, – I, it takes me days, <laughs> days to get over a heavy night now. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, oh, but you still day, managed to draw though, didn't you? The next day I felt like – hell I really did I was like oh my god I'm you know that I'm never drinking again thing yeah. that I get every Friday <laughs> no, <laughs> I don't really by the way um but yeah so th the next day I'd, all I kept thinking about was I I need to get this drawing done because you know I can't I can't miss a day and when it's only January I can't so I did I actually it was later on in the afternoon and I went out there and I just drew my hand because I don't know what it is because hands are just those go-to things. They're always there. You don't have to think of anything. You can make them in any kind of position or gesture you like. And and I find them quite easy to draw now. So I just drew my hand. It was just a five-minute thing, but I got it done. You <laughs> so, didn't just draw around your hand, did you? Oh, that would have been an <laughs> idea. <laughs> I'll remember that next time. Not that I think there's going to be a next time anytime soon. Definitely no. not. And this morning, actually, I've been – my body's a temple. I've been drinking – um wheatgrass shot in uh oh. in orange juice i've um, yeah. heard of it all oh, right okay yeah it tastes revolting but anyway um and we've got some kofi supporters which i think we need to thank yeah we, we want to say thank you to our latest kofi supporters there's helen gitanis and she gave us another donation a second one so a big thank you to her for that oh, and then we thank had you. yeah we had an anonymous donor so thank you very yeah. much katie she didn't put her last name so thank you katie and then thanks again to our recurring supporters who are shelly marlowe and marcia Furman. and we need to do their uh, frothy coffee moustache videos don't we? we do yeah maybe we'll maybe we'll do that in your next um when we catch up and you'll find your art style yeah, that video good. Yeah. maybe we'll do that get a frothy coffee on the go yeah anyway right so let's move on to today's topic so as artists and creatives, we're often asked the question, aren't we? Or we hear, we just hear things like statements that can just really, I don't know, ruffle our feathers or they're just like plain bizarre. I mean, there's one, I've said this before, haven't I? The, the one that's been said to me a few times is, um, you don't look like an artist. But that one always makes me laugh because I'm just, I don't know what an artist is meant to look like. What am I supposed to do then to look like an artist? <laughs> Walk yeah. around covered in paint permanently. <laughs> but you have got a beret now. I have, yes, yeah. thanks to you. Yeah, one that I <laughs> will never wear, but anyway. <laughs> um, so when uh, we had an email, though, didn't we, from Jackie Pauluxi, and she messaged us. I hope I've pronounced I that right. Paluxi. 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 I don't know. Sorry, but, Jackie. Yeah. Um, so Jackie messaged us, didn't she? She sent us an email, I think, just to vent a couple of questions that really frustrate her. So we thought of an, a lot of other ones that we could kind of add to the list and we decided to talk about them on a podcast. So let's start then with the two statements that really frustrate Jackie. 
So she gets frustrated when people say, you're so talented. I mean, I've got to admit, um, Tara, that doesn't frustrate me at all. <laughs> when people say that to me. It would be nice if someone said that to me. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I could see her point when she added that they seem to kind of think it's just black and white and, you know, either you've got it or you haven't. And, you know, how are you supposed to respond to that? Do you just smile and nod, she says, or do you tell them straight just, you know, how hard you've worked to get to that stage? And I think she's right. I do think that non-creative people just think that whatever you do just comes really easy to you and you're born with it and that everything you draw or paint just falls from the, the pencil or from the brush. But actually, it's not like that at all. I mean, yes, it does come easier the more you do it. Of course it does. But... Still, you know, every painting you do is, um, well, certainly I do, I feel it's a bit like trying to solve a puzzle, you know, you've got to really work at it and it doesn't always come easy. And, you know, I think, yeah, artists, they might have a more natural eye for drawing or writing or whatever the particular craft it is um, that they do, but they've really worked hard to own that skill and it takes a lot of practice and a lot of determination to be able to do what they do so whilst yeah I mean they're talented it's not something that they haven't had to work really hard at what are your thoughts on that yeah I think they're saying it in a complimentary form. so do so, I so I I wouldn't even though I can get quite arsy quite easy I, would, <laughs> no. I wouldn't I wouldn't have a go at anybody for that because oh, I just God, think no. a bit been they've been nice yeah um, but yeah I know what she means it's it's not somebody saying that I think that bothers her as much as the fact that they just think it comes naturally and I yeah. I know what she means but yeah I, like I said before if somebody says that to me I'm I think that's lovely <laughs> yeah <laughs> but I can I see what she's saying about you know I, I think people do think it comes easy I think that's yeah. what she's saying I mean she's got another one as well which is I could never do that I'm just not artistic and I mean, that's quite sad, really, isn't it? Because that's almost someone saying that, you know, that you are born like that. And I'm sure there are a lot of people that beyond school have not even tried lifting up a pencil, yeah. even if they used to love it. So who knows? They they might be artistic if, if they tried. They've just not applied themselves to it. It's a bit like the one saying you're so talented, isn't it? Yes. It's, it's that time and effort. There might be a little bit of innate talent, but then to make that talent talent sort of come out even more, you've got to put the hard work in. Yeah, that's the whole thing, isn't it? Definitely. I mean, I, I personally think that anyone can learn to do anything if they want it badly enough. And some people just resign themselves to the fact that they can't do something when they haven't actually put the time in to see if they can. So it, that's that's all it is, I think. Yeah, I mean, I do think that some people are more naturally inclined to mm. to something. Oh, yeah, yeah. Doesn't but, mean to say yeah. somebody else can't learn to no, do it. No. You know, it just might come but harder to, to some. Yeah, and not another. to that extent. It's, mm. it's, it's almost like a sport, isn't it? Um, yeah. If I went out. I'm rubbish at sport. <laughs> yeah, well, if I ran out, went out <laughs> and tried to a sprint, I could get better at it, but I'm never going to be great because I'm not built for sprinting. I'm built mm. for sitting on a couch and looking at the iPad. <laughs> uh, yeah. Do you know, I, I can't I, I can't tell you how bad at sports I am. I was never picked for PE for, for in the team. Oh. What, should we get the violins out? Pick, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm useless with balls. Absolutely <laughs> useless. Try. Oh, God, you've always got to bring something weird in, haven't you? <laughs> no, I literally, I, yeah. I, I, I'm rubbish. I can't catch. I, my my hand-eye coordination when it comes to uh, catching balls is rubbish. So, yeah. Oh, anyway, <laughs> here's another one. So those two were, were Jackie's. Um, they, were, they frustrated Jackie. Um, and one that frustrates me is when somebody says, all right, so, you you know, you paint, but but what's your real job? And I feel like, and I think you've said this in the past, Tara, haven't you, that it seems like we're programmed to think that if we're enjoying something, you know, it can't possibly be considered as work. Yeah. But, you know, it's, it's really not true. And actually, you know, artists that are making a living from what they do, they still have to do all of the boring stuff that goes alongside, you know, the actual creating. And I'd say probably 50% of it is the boring stuff. I mean, we, we make the products, you know, we market them, we know, we post them, we have to keep our accounts. So it's 
it's not just, you know, a matter of sitting in front of a, an easel and having fun all day. And even if you still have another job, like I do, you know, for the more guaranteed income, it's the job you love, I think, that defines you, not the job you don't. So if you are an artist, but you're not yet able to pursue it full time, and then somebody asks you what you do, well, you know, you're an artist. Or if you, if you, if you prefer an artist with a day job. Yeah, I think that's a real tricky one, actually. And that's probably maybe a topic for another another podcast is the, you know, what are you? Yeah, <laughs> well, what am I? <laughs> i give you three guesses what I am. Um, no, you know what I mean, though? It's like, do you answer, I am an artist? So my friend said to me, you, you know, Lisa, you spoke yeah. to Lisa before. Yeah. She, she said to me, when are you going to start calling yourself an artist? Yeah, she it's hard. The other day. Well, I've started putting it on Instagram, places like that, rather than, well, I don't know if I still include designer in that. Because I can't. Well, you are an that. artist, or a des- you're an artist yeah, slash designer, aren't you? Yeah. In a way, but you are certainly but I'd an artist. Like to s- slash the designer away, really. Oh right, okay, I see what you mean. <laughs> you know um, yeah. What I mean? Mm. yeah, it's a tricky one. Well, you've got one more skill that I've got. I I can't put slash designer on the end of of. You can put slash account person and telephone <laughs> person. <laughs> Oh, thanks. That sounds so boring. (laughs) (laughs) You know, I I think it's hard, isn't it? So many people find it's hard to say those words, I'm an artist. And it actually took me years to be able to say that. And I I, I started with, I'm a painter, because I couldn't quite get the words out, I'm an artist. Um, But I did make myself in the end. And now, you know, yeah, I am an artist. I do paint and I do sell my paintings. And, you know, it's a massive, massive part of my life. So I have no problems in saying it now. But I do understand it's really hard to get your head around saying it. So is that what you would answer if someone asked you like at a party that you didn't know? So what do you do? It's, it depends. My, to tell you the truth, I, I usually say I do two things. Uh-huh. <laughs> First of all, I'm an artist and I paint and um, and the first thing they'll say is, oh, do you sell your paintings? And it's like, yes, I do. But um, part time what I do is I, I work running my husband's business. But what am I? Primarily, I'm an artist because that's all I think about, really. The other thing yeah. I do because I really feel that art yet yeah, is it's not a guaranteed income enough at this stage yeah, and no. you said to me before that you don't necessarily know if you'd want to do that full time, do you? Not art as no. in art, art for itself, if you know what I mean. I well, I think the reason is because once you start having to rely on it to bring in as much money as you perhaps did in your job, then it's, there's a danger, isn't there, of it becoming? Well, I always know how I feel about doing commissions. Yeah. I don't particularly enjoy commissions, or I do if there if there's something I love to paint anyway. But the minute I'm out of my comfort zone or I'm worried about getting it just right for for someone else, it's it becomes more of a job then rather yeah. than a joy. So, yeah, there is that as well. I kind of like having the two because I've got one that's guaranteed income and the other one, it means that does it matter if I sell it? Not really. I've enjoyed yeah. doing it. So if someone buys it, great. And if they don't, well, that's not the end of the world, you know. We've got uh, a truck here, haven't we? Hey, right. yeah, where are we? Where are, I don't even know where we <laughs> so, are. <laughs> it's me. So we've got another one. You're only painting, so I know you're not busy. Can you please just? And this mm. is when someone clearly doesn't see what you do as significant, and it they don't see that it's an important part of your life and your mental health. I don't think. And I don't think people would say the same thing to someone who played sport in a team for example can you imagine if your partner went and played football every week on a Saturday no one would say oh can you just instead of going and playing football for the team that you play with every week you know could you just do this they wouldn't would they no I know I wouldn't get my partner to not play golf for easily <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, when Paul goes fly fishing and, yeah, that's his important time, you yeah, know. Exactly. And I wouldn't it's... want him to put that aside for something else because I think that's – it's really important when you when you work hard and it's it's important to have that time to do something you enjoy. And it's a winding time, it isn't it? Seriously. Yeah, it's winding down and he does take it seriously, you know. He, it, yeah. he needs to do that. 
And I know what you mean. That it's frustrating. Oh, you know, oh, you're only doing that. Can, can you do this instead? And it's like, I suppose when I'm going to be putting a full day into a painting and then maybe you'll get sort of someone saying, oh, I'm going to come over for a cup of tea. And it's like you you want to see them, but at the same time you have to make sacrifices to be able to do what you do sometimes. And so I find myself quite a lot saying, that's absolutely fine. I'd love to see you, but can you come at three o'clock? Because then I know I've got a full day in. Yeah. But when somebody turns up at 12 or something like that, and it's like the trouble is with with painting, I have to be in the zone and I have to be in the the zone for a good chunk of time. So if somebody comes around at 12 and I've been out there since, I don't know, 9, 10 o'clock on a weekend, then I'm out of the zone then. And then by the time they've gone, it's almost like, oh, oh, I'll get back to it tomorrow. Yeah. So I'm not very good at being interrupted while I'm in that, painting zone at all I have to focus so I've had to get used to saying and I feel awful sometimes but I have to be able to say to people no I can't see you until three o'clock or I or I just don't answer the phone when it rings because I just won't and it sounds awful but you you kind of have to have an element uh, selfishness is the wrong word what's the word I'm looking for (laughs) (laughs) self-preservation just um yeah, I don't know what word I'm looking for, but yeah, it's important to you and it's not about your only painting. That's the only time you've got to do it. So make sure that comes number one and don't feel guilty about it. Nothing wrong with vetting phone calls anyway. <laughs> you vet mine, don't you? <laughs> no, but actually, do you remember a while back, um, my phone somehow got on so that you were marked as um, don't alert me. <laughs> oh, I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> My partner, Kevin, I, I, don't, I was waiting for him to text me to pick him up from the station. I looked at my phone and he'd got the half moon by it. So I don't know how the phone does it, but somehow... No, it but did, this... you not just, did you not just have it on do not disturb? Is that what it was? Cause that's no, what... no, no, it's just specific people. You get this little half moon <laughs> crescent by certain people. But I don't Maybe... know how it does it. Maybe Siri's now got that intelligent that he's thinking, not her again. She's oh on my, my god, not her. Yeah. Shut her up. Yeah. <laughs> right, this is another one that I really infuriates me. This one really, really infuriates me. And it's when people say, Oh, but it's just a little hobby, isn't it? And there's nothing wrong, even if it was just a little hobby, there's nothing wrong with that at all. But I think that's the one that gets to me the most and it's been said to me so many times you know like it really doesn't matter and it's really not that important it's just a little hobby um and no it's not just a little hobby you know it's a huge part of my life it's something I take really seriously and I make a lot of sacrifices as I said before to be able to do it I put a lot of time into um what we do you and I Tara and to the art and yes I absolutely love it but it's much much more than just a hobby it's become I suppose you could say if we want to get deep again um, <laughs> and become, life. Uh, well no it's I would almost I would say it's become part of my identity as well as oh part, my god it has it, it, it's how I would define my part of myself you know as well as part of my income and I think any artist will totally get that and even from those people who make art as a hobby and nothing more than that that still doesn't mean it's not important having a hobby whether it's creative or not gives us kind of a purpose and it's something to focus on other than the day-to-day things we all have to deal with and I think that's something everybody should have well I think the way that's phrased anyway but it's just a little hobby hobby, that's a derogatory sort of phrase anyway isn't it the way it's put oh yeah yeah well, actually I will say that when it's been said to me I always notice the nose kind of turns up at the same time and it's like <laughs> oh charming <laughs> yeah. but it's yeah I mean it's so much more than that I think for anybody it, it should be much more than that you know yeah I've got another one and it's can you please do a quick sketch of my house slash kids Oh, oh I my can't. body. What about my body? Oh. What would you do? <laughs> well, that'd be a definite. Can quickly no, do a unless... life drawing for of me. <laughs> unless they were hot. Oh, yeah. Yeah, what yeah. took all their clothes off because they were hot or because they're hot, hot? Because <laughs> they're hot, hot. <laughs> so, 
I mean, for a start, you might not dr- like drawing their house or their kids, and there's no such thing as a quick sketch when it comes to something like that. Because you, if you're going to do a quick sketch or something like that, it has to have a good likeness, whether it's of their house or their kids. So that is not quick, is it? No. And it's one of those things that when you get asked to do things like that, and I've been asked in the past, and I know you've been asked, is you just agonise over it, and that you have this thing going on your head. I need to get that thing out of the way. You know, if you've been sort of made almost to do it, Mm. you need to get that thing out of the way and then you put it off and then you have this little fight in your head, don't you? And then eventually you try it and then you agonise over it because you don't like it and it doesn't look good enough, but you don't want to do it again, don't you? And it's like, it's never good enough, is it? But you don't want to do it in the first place. Well, first of all, yeah, certainly if it's something, if somebody said, can you sketch my house? Well, like I said earlier, I hate drawing buildings. So I'd be like, no, I don't want to. But I've been asked quite recently, actually, um, to draw, To I won't say what it is because I'd hate to think the person might be listening. I'm sure, they, I'm sure they're not. But um, well, that'll get you out of the, doing it, wouldn't it? I'll it. <laughs> like it. To, <laughs> to sketch um, something or, well, okay. I will say. So I was asked if I would do a quick, in quotation marks, sketch of um, someone's boat. And um, next to that boat, they also wanted me to put a Labrador. Now, they didn't have a picture of the boat and the Labrador together. So I got a photograph sent to me of a boat that was kind of like thumbnail size, and then a, a, a close up photo of a Labrador, which they wanted to sit next to the boat on the on the harbour. And I'm like, and there was the light of the, hitting the boat, it just, well, there wasn't any light hitting it. So it was just purely oh, no. one tone, you know. And the, my first thoughts were because the trouble is, because it's well, you could call them family. They're not blood related, but they've I've, these people I've known for years and years. So they might as well be family, and I love them to bits. I really do. But there is no, like you said, there's no such thing as a quick sketch. And funny enough, my mum said to me, "Oh, yeah, but just do one of your five minute ones," because she knows that we often sort of like do five yeah. minute sketches. But I, it would never take five minutes to do that. It would never. And actually, the, the lady that, that sort of said about it, she said, oh, no, don't worry about the dog. But I haven't I haven't actually received another photo yet of the boat with any decent lighting. But and oh. but it's, it's hard, isn't it? Because especially if it's someone you think a lot of and you really yeah. want to, you want to say yes because you want to do something nice for them. But at the same time, you they actually don't have a clue how... how um, hard it is for you because you do panic you're like oh how am I going to do yeah. that and they're not going to like it and you know it's quite difficult to say no sometimes but sometimes you just have to because it's not worth how it makes you feel and yeah the worst thing is when it's a subject you're not interested in doing at all you know no, a house I think or I've, whatever. I've got better at saying no I think mm. I'm quite good at saying no now but yeah. also no I, really <laughs> I also think this is what it reminds me of. It, it, if you imagine, right, you've got someone who's really good at cooking. So not you. Uh, <laughs> no, but, definitely not me. <laughs> imagine you've got uh, someone that you know. They're not like a friend friend, but, you know, you know them fairly well. And and you say to them, I know you really enjoy cooking. Why don't you come around and cook, cook us all dinner? But they don't get to stay and eat it. <laughs> I think yeah. that's what it's like. That's a good analogy. I like that one. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love doing things for people. I really do. But there comes a point when you, you have to also remember how it makes you feel as well. Yeah. And whether it's, if it's something that comes, it's, I'm not being funny, but years ago, years ago when I didn't know what I wanted to do and I left school and I did beauty therapy and actually, the did only you? thing. I, oh, you yeah, know this? yes, I did. Oh, something you don't know about me. That's exciting. Oh, this is <laughs> why you know how to put on eyeliner and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I loved doing makeup. That was the thing I most loved to do, and I did it for quite a few years. And when my when Adele, my my oldest um, child, was born, I did it sort of freelance. But my I should have realised what I wanted to do because actually, the thing I most loved to do was makeup. I loved doing people's makeup and where was I going with this why am I, I, why am I talking about oh yes that's right that's right <laughs> and I remember when I did that there'd be people that would say to me 
oh, you know, can you just wax my legs? Or can you do me a massage? Just wax my line. Yeah, oh, and that, and that. And funny enough, that didn't bother me at all. It didn't bother me at all because it was something I could easily do. It was no different, you know, it's just giving them half an hour of my time. That was all it was, or an hour of my time. You can tie it in with a cup of coffee. I had no problems ever doing anything like that. Um, as long as I had the time, then that's fine. But it's very, very different doing something like that for someone because it's not about the result and you're not worried about like unveiling their legs going, ta-da, please be happy with it, please be happy with it. Because ultimately, they don't have hairy legs anymore, which is... No, it's not creative, is it? It's not. There's a definite outcome. Yeah, I haven't put my heart into their legs and and I've I've just made sure that I have done it safely and effectively, but I haven't put my heart and soul into waxing their bikini line or back cracking. Oh, what is it? No, let's not go there. (laughs) Back crack and, yeah, something else. I don't know. <laughs> Wasn't it back crack and sack or something like that? I mean, oh, God. God. <laughs> Didn't do many of those, thank God. Back then, that wasn't the fashion. No, In fact, back then goodness. when I did it, we're going back a long time. I don't think men were into kind of waxing and all that. Oh, my no. goodness. <laughs> I'm quite relieved, really. But anyway, yeah, so so that's a whole different thing. Giving, giving that kind of time to someone is absolutely fine. I didn't mind at all. But, yeah, it's very, very different when it's something you're putting your heart and soul into or you're worried about the result and will they like it, won't they like it. Yeah, totally different. Funny enough, though, I will say, it was there was a slight similar feeling about doing someone's makeup, especially if it was wedding day. That's why you always oh, had yeah, like a – Yeah, you always had like a um, – you'd have a trial first um, but that was always more worrying but again I suppose that is being creative isn't it yeah and I, I always think it, it's the same for me like doing a design job if if someone gives you that job it, you agonize over it mm. because well as well it it's not automatic that things are going to go well is it no it's like if you're painting so I could sit down with a design job or with a drawing or anything and you do not know the outcome because that day you might not be you might not be in the zone it might not be working and you might come out with a load of crap yeah and then you have to present that crap <laughs> because yeah. you have no choice because you have no more time yeah yeah Do you know what I mean and then what isn't it weird though that sometimes the thing you think is rubbish somebody else will yeah. absolutely love so it's often you're not the best um, person to even judge but yeah I know what you mean the other way around as well because I actually presented I didn't present in person but I sent some logos to someone a few months ago and I thought they were really good and I'm not you know amazing but I thought they were pretty good and I thought she was definitely gonna like one of these didn't like them Really, yeah. yeah. That's so frustrating, isn't it? Yeah. And, you, you know, you put the time and effort in and, you, yeah. yeah, it's crazy, crazy. Yeah. But I've got another one, and this is probably, it sounds really similar, but I don't mean this in exactly the same way. But another one is, can you please draw this for me as a favour? I can't pay you anything or I can't pay you much. Or maybe they'll say, oh, I'll take you out for dinner. <laughs> but you love painting anyway, don't you? So if you can just quickly knock this up for me sort of thing. And yeah. I feel like that's kind of like saying that on the one hand, your work is good enough for them that they want yeah. it. But on the other hand, it's bad enough that you shouldn't expect to get paid for it. So I kind of, well, it does go back, doesn't it, to what we were talking about before, that non-creatives just assume it kind of comes really easy and they don't appreciate the time involved. And actually, it's far worse when there are expectations attached. And that just makes the whole thing a lot harder, as we've been saying, you know. And and it takes time, doesn't it? So it's only right that you should um, do what pays and not do what doesn't. <laughs> and you shouldn't really feel guilty about saying no either. I suppose if it's your mum or your dad yeah. or your sister or something, it's very different. But you know, um, that's still tricky, though, when it's family, because I designed my mum and dad's uh, anniversary. Is that the 50th? Oh, yeah, the flyers. The, is it, no, not flyers. Invitations. <gasps> Invitations, yeah. yeah. And I really did not want to do that. And, no. again, it was because, well, obviously, you know, I don't like doing design much, but also because... I don't want to produce something crap for them. No, because it's more it, almost more important then. Yeah. And I think the other reason it's more important is because sp- especially when it's art that they gonna they're gonna hang on their walls. You've got to face that whenever you go around there. Yeah. You know, it's like 
it, something will come back and haunt you that you drew years ago. It's like, yeah. oh no, take it down, take it down. <laughs> well, my mum's my still got loads of art from when I was like a yeah. teenager. It's like, and even some from like, say, 20 years ago, and it's like, oh, mm. it's a bit cringe. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but that's good. That's a good sign. That means that you you've improved a lot since then. When you look at it and you, it's twenty years old, you still think it's great. That's when it's a problem. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so there's another one which almost goes along with the one you just said, which is why is your art so expensive? And it goes back to the thing you're saying where people don't appreciate, you know, how much something is worth. And I really don't think people are aware how long something actually takes, let alone the cost of materials. I mean, it, when you put, do your oil painting, I don't know how much totally oil paints cost, but if you're doing a big panel and painting it, it's got to be a lot, isn't it? I don't know. What's the cost? Well, I mean, yeah. Obviously, I use all artist grade, um, artist quality paints, so high quality paints, high quality canvas. I mean, I would say that that five foot by four foot marble painting I did, yeah, I remember. Yeah. Um, I think the canvas alone was uh, £150. Yeah. I mean, some people probably wouldn't expect to pay £150 for a painting. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's so true. And, and you know, probably on top of that, I probably used £50 worth of oil paints, yeah. I expect. Not, no, I wouldn't say oil paints, but the uh, when, once you've got your oils and your mediums and, you know, and you... you you do go through brushes as well yeah. and it's it is expensive it is expensive and and yeah the time I mean when it's a commission it's even worse because obviously you've got the emails going back and forth back and forth back and forth between you trying to work out what it is they are wanting yeah and you've got to try and get into their head and you've got to try and maybe do all the setups and do various different photographs and sketches and send those back and say, is this kind of the thing you mean? And and it takes sometimes hours of your time just to get the emails back and forth and, and hours and hours and days of time to to actually get the right image to work from. You know, yeah, particularly I always with, think at that point someone could actually say no. Well, they could, and you've already put a lot of time into it. Yeah. So... And then, of course, you've got the stress of it, and it is stressful when it's a commission, particularly. But obviously, when it's not a commission, sometimes I mean, the one the painting on I'm working on at the moment, I vowed I'd get it done by the end of January. There is a part of this painting that is driving me nuts. I just can't get right, and it's so annoying, and I don't know what it is. But I faced it to the wall. I'm going to face it to the wall for a couple of weeks and go back to it, and hopefully it'll just come to me. I'll be like, ah, oh, no, now I can show see me. it. Show me it. Well, maybe I could spot it. Yeah, I, I, perhaps I should do that. But it's one of those things that you know it's bothering me a lot. And I even last night in my sleep, you know, I could, I could sort of almost be dreaming about, oh, maybe I'm trying to do this. Maybe I, maybe it's this. What is it about? And and I'll be driving myself nuts trying to figure it out. It is like I say, it's the puzzle of it, isn't it? Yeah. And eventually the puzzle will fit together, but it takes a lot of work, hard work to do that, and a lot of time. And art is expensive because of what you put into it. It's not just about the materials, is it? It's about the how much you know, of your actual self you put into it. Well, it always amazes me. You know, you go along to these art and craft shows. Yeah. You must have been along to one. And oh, you yeah. see these people and, and some of them have got like craft work, some of them have got these little paintings and stuff. And you look at the price of them and they're nothing. I know. It'll and be like a watercolour that, I, I mean, I've seen this before. I've been into my local framers actually and she she um, quite often puts people's work up in there to sell. And there's people probably retired people that don't feel they're they do feel that it's just a hobby and oh, I'll just make a little bit of money but I saw a, a watercolor the other day and I thought it was so lovely absolutely lovely this watercolor was and it was framed and mounted and it was 35 pound and I thought you know that frame would have probably cost you 20 yeah you know um then the mount on the top of that would have cost you probably you know another fiver on the top and she's probably made five quid if that. And actually, went, by the time she's got it framed 
and took it, taken it down there. Well, she hasn't made a thing. Whoever it was no. hasn't made an absolute thing. But it's somebody who doesn't necessarily th- feel their art is worth anything, and they're just I, doing I it for the just, joy. I think as well, some of these, some people who are doing that are just doing it to recoup their money so they can mm. paint more. But I always find that quite sad. That well, it's always it's, like thinking they're not that they're feeling their work isn't worthy, and I think yeah, it's and I a think shame. that. That actually is one of the reasons why people don't think art is worth that much because the majority of people, when they see art, unless you're specifically going out to look at a gallery, most people would probably see art more in that setting of, yeah, you know, maybe a little local shop like you were saying or uh, a craft show. So yeah. you become accustomed to that is the price of art. Or yeah. even if you go into like, you know, your local sort of houseware shop where they sell a bit of everything yeah. and you can buy prints in, in there. But yeah, the ones mass- that kind of, well, they're mass, mass produced, produced, like you say, yeah. Yeah, yeah. but you'll, you'll go in there and you'll get, and there'll be a really nice print, uh, maybe yeah. quite a biggish, you know, thing, and it'll be 30 quid maybe for a big sort of painting. Yeah. But of course, if someone was actually going to paint that by hand, it's going to cost a fortune. I mean, they they might have spent all night painting that, or you know, multiple nights. They've, like you said, you know, they've not gone out with friends and family when they've asked because they've wanted to spend time painting it. Just and you're you're buying something new, unique. If you're buying an original painting, you know, no one else in the world has got that. Only you. Even if they make prints, it's not the it's not the same as the original painting. I mean, limited edition prints that's that's one way to go because obviously you're still getting something that only a few people have got. That's different. But when you've got something mass produced, like in such a commercial way, like you're talking about, yeah. you know, you could walk down, you know, your road and there could be three other people with the same painting on their wall. It's not the same, is it? It's nothing original no, not, about that. Oh, so mind you, we've got um, a limited edition print on there but it's like a box canvas and it actually looks like an original because it's got texture and everything yeah oh yeah yeah but anyway, that was so expensive yeah i've for, got one actually 500 quid really for, yeah yeah for a print and that's the total opposite scale isn't it yeah now i've got an original um not an original a limited edition print as well on um our hallway wall funny enough and yeah. i love it and that's a quite a big one on a box canvas and yeah. i can't remember how much it cost but it wasn't cheap no. But I didn't mind because I knew that there was only going to be, I don't know, 25 of them, I think, made. Yeah. So that, and so I know it's not going to be. But when, yeah, when you go to those shops and there's just thousands of them, it's like, yeah. oh, it's not the same. It's not the no. same. There's nothing wrong with it. I don't think there's anything no, wrong with no, that. But, not at um, all. Not at all. You've got to appreciate the difference or, you know, I don't think people necessarily appreciate the difference between the two. That's the point. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So here's another one. Even I could do that. Now, I hear this a lot when it's people talk about abstract painting, particularly. Um, and actually, even Paul, my husband, <laughs> sometimes when we watch things like Landscape Artists Artist of the Year or Portrait Artists, you get someone who's well out there and is just literally, you know, scribbling around and drawing lines and whatever. And, and he'll say, oh, God, even I could do that. You know, he, he's, he's guilty of that. But it's one of those things that, I think either you get it or you don't. It's easy to think as a beginner artist or a non-creative that all you've got to do is, I don't know, chuck some paint on a canvas, roll around naked on it, and voila, you know, you've got an abstract. (laughs) Have you ever tried that, Tara? No, not not recently. (laughs) No, no, I haven't. Um, But, you know, you can tell an abstract that's been created by an artist who knows what they're doing from someone who doesn't. You know, there's a lot more thought involved than you actually might think. So, you know, a lot of thought is put into the composition and the colour balance of a skilled abstract. And that's something that viewers don't always appreciate. And sometimes they might say the same about a quick sketch. Oh, I could do that. But the thing about a quick sketch is it's just that, you know, it's not meant to be a perfectly executed drawing. It's often caught in a matter of moments from life and what you're doing is you're capturing the energy or the body language or just the feel of the place and that's often all you can do in such a short time sometimes I suppose it's just an idea you're getting down on paper while it's in your head like a little thumbnail sketch so it's almost like kind of like a shorthand it's actually not without practice so you know when you look at an abstract don't always think oh that's easy because I think a lot of thought goes into them not all of them, some no. of them. That's where I think 
the abstract thing has its issues. It's it's the majority of abstract artists are creating you know really lovely work that they've obviously really had to work on. Mm. It's those ones where you get the red canvas with a black cross. Yeah, you know, that, oh, that that's is where thing, isn't it? yeah, that is where you're, you're getting like what Paul's saying. I see him where he says I could do that. It's that. Yeah, that's thing, different. Yeah. It? Yeah, I know yeah, that there was a painting. I don't know who did it. I can't remember, but there was a painting. I don't even know where it was, but it was basically a canvas with a black, um, just a black box in it. You know, like almost yeah. like a rectangle. It wasn't a Rothko or anything like that, but it was a. It was just a black rectangle, I suppose, on this white canvas, and this was thousands and thousands of pounds. Now, apparently. To get that depth of black, he overlaid colour after colour after colour after colour, transparent colours to get this black. And yeah, okay, that's that's fine. I mean, I mix my own blacks. I've never used a, a black from a tube. But it's not something that nobody, it's not something that perhaps I couldn't do or you couldn't do, you know. Yeah. But I don't get that. There might be listeners switching off going, well, I definitely get it. And that's fine. Every That's the thing about art, isn't it? It's very subjective. It's very like... Um, people are like different things and understand different things. That's what makes it interesting. But that's, I suppose, the kind of abstracts I'm talking about are more the ones with with shapes and colours, and you can't you you can almost read something into it that's not necessarily there, or it might be. It's it's a kind of abstract that makes you ask questions. That's when you can tell it's a skilled person that's done it. And there are plenty of people that aren't skilled that are doing it, and maybe they don't actually have the skill they want so they might hide behind abstract there is that side of things um but when it is something that's skilled and you, you know as an artist you recognize that in another artist it's frustrating when you hear somebody else who isn't an artist saying oh I could do that because the chances are well they, unless it was a flute they probably couldn't <laughs> no I'm, I must admit when I tried to do semi-abstract faces and obviously that's only semi-abstract that's not total abstraction mm. I really appreciated how difficult it is yeah. because if we're, you know, as, as we're trying to draw things fairly realistic, you know, if we're sketching or whatever and we're drawing things that are in front of us or in photographs, you know what you're aiming for, don't you? You know, whereas with abstract, you don't know. I mean, maybe some people can see in the head, I don't know, but I know for me it it would take way more work to try and, abstract something than to actually draw it as it is oh definitely yeah but way more interesting I for me or to to partially abstract something I think you kind of you've got to have a certain kind of mind to do it I don't know if I would I've never really tried abstracts and it's just not something I've ever been interested in doing so it's not something it's a bit like landscapes I'm not interested in landscapes so I won't bother painting one yeah but I can see why people think they'd be easy, but I bet they're not. No. Right, I've got a couple more, and these are a little bit more towards the design sort of area. So I get something like, maybe you could just stick some text in a circle. Now, unbelievably, this is what an email from my old accountant said when I sent him a quote for logo design. He basically said that he was looking to have a, a logo for a cafe that he he'd bought and uh, he told me all about you know the type of thing he was looking for so I sent him a quote and really I don't think he expected me to send him a quote I expected he just wanted me to do it for free Mm. even though he was uh, charging me (laughs) so yeah that's the sort of thing maybe you could just you know that's when someone wants something quick and they don't want to pay for it and then this is a real classic and I get this from friends and family that looks really professional (laughs) <laughs> well like the shock a the shock in hang their on. voices <gasps> wow that's really good <laughs> i am professional but it I, that just amazes me and there's um another one now this is a classic from clients and i'm sure if any other designers are listening they would have had this one and the phrase is well you're the designer and that basically means that the client um, has been really lazy and couldn't really be bothered to think what they want or have no clue whatsoever. And so without giving you a brief, they assume you should know because you design. So, mm. yeah, that drives me potty. Oh, yeah, that would drive me bonkers as well. 
Yeah. So I've got one here and it's, um, how can you be a real artist if your work isn't in a gallery? So first of all, these days, it's not actually necessary to be in a gallery. Some artists turn down offers to be re- represented in, you know, by a gallery. I mean, things have changed, haven't they, so much with the internet. And, and now we can get our work seen by thousands of people online without having to rely on a gallery to do that for you. So things have changed massively in that way. And I think less and less artists are feeling the need to go down that route for that reason, particularly since a gallery will often take sort of 50 percent commission, which is quite a chunk. And that is quite right, too, because, you know, they're doing a lot of that marketing work for you and they've got their own costs to cover. But these days, it's something we have a choice to do ourselves. So, you know, it really does boil down to choice and it has nothing to do with whether you're considered to be a real artist or not. Okay, so here's another one. How can you be a real artist if you haven't been to art school? That gets on my nerves as well, that one does. As I've said before in the past, you know, I went to art school for a year and pulled out because it, well, it was an open art school, I should add. Um, And I pulled out because it just really wasn't for me. I didn't feel like I was learning any of the techniques I was expecting to learn at art college. Um, I wasn't learning any of the techniques I was looking to learn. And I was being encouraged to paint in ways that just were never going to feel natural to me at all. And the fact is going to art school doesn't necessarily make anyone a good artist. And also not going to art school doesn't necessarily make you a bad one either. You know, art school can be brilliant for some people, but just simply not work for others. And it all, I think, depends on the individual. And I do think it's important to keep studying your craft but it doesn't have to be at college there are so many other ways to do it now and again it bears no relevance to whether you're an artist or not just walk around any gallery you'll find they'll happily represent self-taught artists in fact I'd I'd say almost half of the people you see in in galleries these days are self-taught and it's about the art they produce not what they did at school um for me I loved my first year of art college absolutely loved it but now if if I could have had the second year again I wouldn't have gone I'd have been far better off using online you know different online courses and stuff because you can get much more diversity in what you want to learn by learning something online you can get much more specific unless you've got this college nearby that teaches or you can go somewhere that teaches exactly what you want to learn it's very hard to get that I think even now so but it's so easy to get that online so yeah I think definitely things have really changed in that way but I don't think it matters at all it's it's what you produce now isn't it it's not what you did you know whether you've been somewhere what you did yeah, it's, how, it's how you develop as an artist and I think it's a bit like driving isn't it you learn the basics but ultimately you learn to drive when you first go out driving on your own that's when you learn to drive you know and it's all about you you've, you're the one in charge of keeping yourself alive do you know what I mean yeah you learn to drive over the next few years you don't learn to drive in 12 lessons or whatever no I mean I, I learned design at college but to be honest I got to my first job and I knew nothing so yeah. you learn everything on the job don't you or everything when you're doing and in fact, if yeah. you just rely on only what you learned at college, you, you end up being an artist who just does the same old tricks all the time. And it's, they're very recognisable as, as trained artists because of that reason. You, you know, the best artists are the ones who develop um, and almost forget what they learned at art school. Yeah, I think one good thing about college, and I don't know if it's the same now, it maybe is, and see, this is why it perhaps worked for me and not for you was because I really liked the experimental thing. And I wasn't when I first mm. went into college. I was very traditional yeah. in what I painted. But for me, I loved that side of things. Whereas for you, I don't think you did. Did you? No. You wanted to learn painting techniques. But yeah, I mean, for me, I wanted that really to... opened my mind. Yeah, I mean, we were always encouraged, break the rules, break the rules. My problem was they weren't teaching us the rules in the first place. Yeah. to be able to break them that's what I found so ridiculous um in in the school I went to anyway I, you know everyone's different everyone yeah. reacts and um, everything's different for everybody everyone's different oh god how many times have I said everyone's different <laughs> <laughs> how many different times can you say it okay, yeah okay. I've got another one Shall we move on? Yeah, yeah. Um, and it is we would like to use your artwork in exchange you will get exposure <gasps> 
this happens not only in the artwork but also in the design work it's a classic when people ask you to do for things for free in the design world as well that mm. you'll get exposure now unless the client is absolutely huge and your art or design is going to be shared nationwide with your name you know or some some way of getting you out there there is very very little chance that you are going to get any exposure it's a load of old rubbish so don't do it. I mean, imagine saying to your local plumber, can you come and fix my toilet? I'll, uh, you know, I'll tell all my friends about you. They're yeah. not going to do it, are they? <laughs> I'll write you a good review on Facebook. Yeah. 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 So true. Why do people think artwork and art is so different than everything else, you know? I don't know. I could have, when I was doing my, the back sacks and cracks, I could have got, <laughs> in exchange for being my client, you'll get exposure. <laughs> <laughs> anyway right yes. okay here is another one so this one is something I get a lot of and it's emails like this you have been shortlisted to enter our competition all you have to do is upload your images and pay so many dollars per image that so might be $25 it might I don't know could be anything now this is something I personally would never ever do because if the company or gallery that are sort of doing this competition are as good as they claim then why do they need your money to submit an entry you know you wouldn't expect an actor would you to pay to audition for a part so why should it be any different for an artist and you know the fee is payable whether or not your work is selected at the end of the day as well so there's not even a guarantee your work would be included so yeah. you know Ultimately, I think these kinds of competitions are, are more about the company making easy money than they are about the work, the artwork. Were you going to I say used to get, Yeah, as I say, I used to have a blog about graphic design mm. and I used to get these companies emailing me all the time saying, oh, we've got a graphic design competition, very much like you're saying with the art. Mm. And, it's, and I'd say, and they'd say, please, could you put it on your blog, you know, to advertise it for free, you know. Yeah. And I'd say, do you have to pay anything to get in? And then they'd go, like you say, Oh, yeah, it's just $25 or I go, no. Yeah. It's just this thing. It is ridiculous. Mm. I don't get it. Well, I've received similar emails as well, inviting me to be included in like a swanky art book. I guess you could call them kind of vanity books. And yeah, you know, the book might well exist, but I think it's bordering on exploitation, to be honest. If the book's good enough that they'll be able to sell it, then why should you pay to be in it? You know, without the artwork to go inside it, they wouldn't even have a book to sell. So it doesn't make any sense to me. So definitely avoid those kind of things. If your art is good enough, you'll attract the right kind of attention, the right kind of people who appreciate your talent and want to share it, and they don't expect you to pay to show it. Yeah, and I think just sort of to end on is that I reckon a lot of non-artists think that art is just frivolous, but if you look around you art is just everywhere it's in you know every bit of packaging you see sitting on your desk in your cupboards it's on logos it's on clothing it's on your walls tv programs it is everywhere so it is not frivolous it's a big business actually really art and all those things look good only because of artists and designers input so without creative people everything would look pretty dull and boring so it would art, wouldn't it i was thinking of that i was trying to imagine if you imagine looking around your house or or go walking along the street or watching telling there was no art directors or artists or designers how different well, would th th things be well if there was no designers that would take away product designers so we wouldn't mm. even have like chairs or you know we'd have real functional wouldn't we everything yeah. would be very functional like in logs. a kind of boring way. Yeah, we should be sitting on logs. <laughs> we should be sitting on logs. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's a really good point, though. Yeah. Anyway, so we've now going to... I'm, I'm a bit lost now. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. We're going to read out the answers to our previous question. And the question was, if for some reason you were no longer ever allowed to create artwork again, what other hobby, creative or otherwise, would you pursue instead of and why and we had absolutely tons of answers for this so i'm really sorry we've had to cut them down quite a bit okay yeah so i've got katie karcheski and she says i would spend more of my time devoted to helping others make art currently i volunteer at an art therapy charity and i love it 
I've got Art by Jackie P. And she says, writing, because you can paint pictures with carefully chosen words. I'd write stories and poems. Adrian Sutherland. That's a tricky one. Art is already my fallback hobby as I'm no longer able to pursue my love of endurance sports due to having MS. I used to make mosaics and restore furniture, but that's too heavy going for me now. Maybe poetry. I wrote quite a bit years ago. Failing that, I buy lots of land, rescue homeless animals and take care of them all. Oh, I love that. I love that. I've got Kirsten Lee and she says, create create artwork oh okay create artwork is incredibly broad some people have talked about poetry or photography as their fallback i consider both of them art if all tangible means of creativity were removed my outlook would be training horses which i've done all my life and i've got maggie ha now is it maggie ha or did you accidentally cut off half of her name i think it's maggie ha oh (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> okay, I really, I'm really sorry, Maggie. If you're, if you have a different surname and I'm missing half of it, I'm really sorry. It's my fault. Sorry. If you have. Maggie says gardening, which applies human creative skill and imagination with the vagaries of nature. Whatever I choose to create in the garden must be tempered by the knowledge that there is no such thing as perfection, only progress. A garden celebrates life while teaching life lessons. It's a place where if one is smart enough, one learns to work with life rather than to struggle against it. I'd be rubbish at that because um, I love plants so much and I I have a house, my kitchen is full of them, but I keep killing them. (laughs) So I I don't know. I don't love them that much then. Well, I try my hardest. I don't know whether I overwater them or what, but yeah, I mean, one I had the other day for 24 hours and it died. I don't know what oh. happened. I think it might be because I put it on the cooker hood. Maybe oh, that Yes, it. that might be it. Mm. I'm, I'm going to have to look up vagaries after the Well, do, do you want to know a secret? <laughs> what? So I <laughs> I didn't read it right. I, when, I, wrote, I read the word vagaries and I thought, I've got to look that up. I yeah. wasn't quite sure what it was. So so I looked it up what it means. Yeah. And, and I actually can't remember exactly what it means, but I had to write it how it's pronounced. Like, so I had to put in brackets V A Y G O R E E S because I because I kept saying vagaries. Uh, <laughs> so you don't know what it means still. Okay, let me ask Siri. Hold on. What does vagaries mean? Vagary means an unexpected and inexplicable change in a situation or in someone's behaviour. Okay, so the changes, yeah. the changes okay. of nature. <laughs> Thank you, Siri. Okay. Anyway, yes, you've got another one, haven't you? I've got Anna Atkinson done, and she says, So difficult. I consider my drawing and painting as art, as I do writing and crafts like sewing that I do. A non-creative pas- pastime. Um, I can't think of any. I would waste away and my brain would turn to mush. So I've got John Munro and he says, singing, I'm so bad. People across the world would be fundraising to get me to be able to continue writing again. (laughs) Okay, I've got Chris Cart. I would create and build wood furniture with nature themes using as much of nature's creations as possible. I love seeing possibilities and materials and being outdoors. This would give me the opportunity to enjoy nature and bring images and... Oh dear, I forgot. I I cut off the rest of the comment. (laughs) I just realised that as well. As she was reading it, I thought, I wonder if she's got the rest of this comment. (laughs) I think it would just give her the opportunity to enjoy nature. I think that's the end. Yeah, the end. Sorry, sorry, Chris. (laughs) Victoria Chan, music. I play a bit of guitar and love it. You play a bit of guitar, Tara, don't you? Not very well, no. But it's something that needs a lot of time to get good at, which at the moment I'm spending on art. So if I can't make art, I'll go back to guitar and songwriting. Another thing I wish to get better at is writing. I used to write sad poetry, but I've stopped since I found happiness. Writing is a great hobby to have as it doesn't take up space or require you to spend on equipment no excuses to waste time on shopping instead of creating but just a little idea for me is if you've given up poetry because you've found happiness why don't you write happy poems instead of sad ones anyway just just thought don't some people though find it really hard to write happy poems because it tends to be a lot of songs tend to be sad don't they Mm. Yeah, yeah. 
I've got Karen Watty and she says, I'm better known as a writer and photography anyway. I don't currently have a real camera, not that that stops me, but I still write anyway. I have something to say. Sarah Grace says, I would do various fibre arts, which I already do more often than fine arts or paper crafts. I've got Illustrated Mix and she says, if I could no longer create art, I'd want to pursue a degree. I don't need one now, but I've still got that nagging feeling I want one. So then it's a question of what to study. There's so many things I'm interested in. My mind flicks from forensic science, anthropology, dentistry, English, physics, child child, child psychology. (laughs) And speech therapy by any chance. (laughs) Yeah, I need that. (laughs) Do you know, I've always loved um, the idea of being a forensic scientist. But I think it's, yeah, I think it's more because you get those programs though, don't you, called Silent Witness and you're everywhere. You're looking at you know fibers one minute and then you're looking at teeth marks another minute but actually it's not like that is it apparently you're very very much um you have one thing to do and that's your specialty so it's probably not as exciting as it sounds I could be wrong I actually remember this joke this is awful (laughs) about it was about murders and stuff and it was um something like yeah (laughs) it was something like I used to really worry about you know getting murdered but then i saw on these like murder crime scenes that the victim is always wearing matching bra and panties so i, <laughs> so I don't worry anymore <laughs> oh, i wouldn't be <laughs> <laughs> i mean either if i knew i was going to get murdered then i probably would yeah. But you tend not to know these things in advance. That's a problem. Be a subtle sort of grey tinge, maybe. That would match. <laughs> okay, I've got art by Jemima. Oh no! Gemini. Oh no! Just sorry, art by Gemini. Sorry. Oh man, I. This is not me saying that. <laughs> that this is art by Gemini. Oh man, I take death over not being able to do art. My goodness, that's really dramatic. So I no, no doubt she does wear matching bra and panties. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'd probably focus on music, maybe even composing or sewing or astronomy or physics or forensics. Wow, forensics is quite popular, isn't it? Yeah. Um, I'm with Illustrated Mix. My list is super long too. I'd probably focus on music, maybe even composing or sewing or astronomy or physics or forensics. The universe is so full of stuff to learn about. Okay, and we have a brand new question for you. And the question is, have you ever been embarrassed to show your art? And if so, why? So have you ever been embarrassed to show your art? And if so, why? So Tara, have you ever felt embarrassed to show your art? Yeah, sure I have been. I can't think when, but I will have been. Okay, and why is that? Why? Well, it depends what it is. I, I, I'm i sure I've been embarrassed in the past when I've done little commissions, like years and years ago when I've oh. done commissions. It's because you're never completely satisfied with what you've done necessarily yeah. and you don't know how they're going to react and they haven't paid you yet. Well. <laughs> yeah. So you're like, Very oh, true. my God. Yeah. You know. yeah. How about you? Uh, yeah, well, yeah. Um, maybe self, self-conscious, maybe more than embarrassed. When we did that in exhibition, I found it really embarrassing to stand there kind of surrounded by my artwork on the walls while people were coming in and looking. I did yeah. actually enjoy it in the end, but it, it, it was mortifyingly embarrassing at first. It's just yeah. something you have to get your head around, isn't it? Yeah, so as always, you can tweet us your answers at Kit Creatives or let us know in the Facebook group. If you haven't joined, I suggest you do. We will put the question up there and also on the Facebook page and, of course, on Instagram, which is Kick in the Creatives. And don't forget to pop over to our website at kickinthecreatives.com to find out how you can take part in some of our upcoming creative challenges. And of course, there you can also subscribe to the podcast so you never miss an episode. And if you're enjoying the episode or the podcast in general, please, please share it. And we'd be really grateful if you'd leave us a little review on iTunes or even just a star rating. Five will do. (laughs) (laughs) and don't forget to subscribe to our weekly youtube videos arctic sunday but we've also got some other videos going on there at the moment which are the find your art find your art style experiment ones so yeah check out our youtube channel because we've got regular videos going up there as well and don't forget if you enjoy what we do and you'd like to help 
us here at Kicking the Creatives, you can now support us by buying us a coffee. And you can find a link on how to do that on our website. And it really, really does help us because this does not um, get done for free. It does cost Tara and I to do all of this. And um, so every little bit helps. We really appreciate your support. You know, you said that Kicking the Creatives bit mm-hmm. just then. You sounded like one of those computers, you know, when the people press the buttons go, get your large creatives. Is, is that what I sounded like? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, it's funny because I could almost, thinking about it, I could, when I say don't forget to pop over to our website, <laughs> I, I say that so, ma- so much now, I don't even need to read it. And I kind of think, oh, you could probably just record that in advance and just throw it in. Yeah, each could do. <laughs> yeah, could do. Anyway, that is it for this time, and we will see you next time. Oh, um, yeah. Bye. 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 Thank you so much for listening. We hope you enjoyed the episode, and if you did, perhaps you'd like to share it and leave a review for us on iTunes. Back soon. You know, really does boil down to choice and it has nothing to do with whether you're considered to be a real artist or not what are your thoughts on that sorry <laughs> I was looking at <laughs> my next <laughs> 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 but did you fall asleep yeah I did sorry <laughs> you've been talking too much um oh no what, have what, I what was the question <laughs> Oh well, it was the question was how can you be a real artist? A real ass? How can you be a real? How can you be, <laughs> can be a real ass by not listening to what you just said? <laughs> I oh, know what the question is now. Oh, yeah. I'm back. I'm back. <laughs> Welcome back, Tara, to the show. Yeah. So, what do I think about it? Yeah, I think you're totally right. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Come yeah, on, let's let's move on to the let's yeah. move on to another one. <laughs>